Jesus, we thank you. I thank you this morning. Somebody just praise him and tell him, Jesus, you're all in all in my life. We thank you, Jesus. We appreciate you for what you have done for us. We appreciate you for who you are in our midst. We appreciate you for being God in our lives. You have turned hard situations around. Lord, you have ministered your grace upon us. By your spirit, you have caused us to soar high with wings like eagles. We have not been touched by anything evil. For the Lord God has been our butler. We give you praise today. Receive glory. Receive honor. Receive adoration. As we sit this morning, Lord God, to share from your holy word, minister your life and your grace to each one of us. That we may know what your plan is. That we may walk with you. That we may experience the healing glory of Christ in every sphere of our lives. We commit and dedicate ourselves to you. That Lord we may learn from you today. In Jesus name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. <laughs> Give him a better clap in Jesus name. as you may be seated. Praise Jesus. Thank you for making it to church. It started raining in the morning. By the grace of God, you're here. And I know, just like you know, that God is here. He's in our lives and he's in our midst. He's in our lives and he's in our midst. So I want us to go straight to the word of God because the Lord prepares us so that he can use us. He prepares us so that he can use us. He prepares us so that you can be usable in his kingdom. Praise the Lord. I want to speak to you today on taking advantage of the grace of God upon your life. Taking advantage of the grace of God that is upon your life. Taking advantage means benefiting yourself with the grace or from the grace that God has supplied to you. Praise the Lord. Please pull your notebook as we always advise ourselves. Pull your notebook because the spirit, are you prepared for the spirit of God to speak to you this morning? Are you ready for the spirit of God to minister to you? Church, are you ready? Can I hear a good amen if you're ready? Amen. We come to church, all of us, to be ministered to by the Holy Spirit. And uh, if you trust that the Lord is planning to minister to you, then you will be keen to want to also put down the things that he is going to say to you. So we are talking about benefiting yourself from that grace of God that is upon you. Praise the Lord. One, I want you to know, just like you know, that grace, the grace of God is so important to a believer in the new covenant. Understanding the subject of his grace is so important. And I'm deliberate today because I want you to know after the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the chapter of condemnation came to an end. What is condemnation? Condemnation is passing judgment on somebody or declaring somebody unfit. To condemn is to pass judgment upon somebody or to declare them unfit. Now, I'm starting slowly. Now, many times when we do something wrong, when we do something wrong, we tell people, we, we feel something inside us and then people say, I felt condemned. I don't know what I'm talking about. You say, you tell people, I, I, when I did, when I, when, I, when I abused her, when I did something wrong, when I did this, I felt condemned. Have we used that word many times? Now, many times in the church, 
We use terms wrongly, so we develop a wrong attitude and idea about a particular word or terminology in the, in the Bible. Those who have been with us for some time, you remember we learned about terminologies of the new covenant. Praise the Lord. So, when you are saying, I, feel, I, I felt condemnation in my heart, you're using the wrong words. You're using the, what you felt was guilt. You felt guilty. You felt bad because of what you did. Are we together now? Now, if you say you felt condemned, then the next question I want to ask you is, where does condemnation come from? To declare somebody unfit for a particular office or to declare somebody is guilty and worthy to be punished comes from the judge the person who is passing judgment. It doesn't come from the recipient of the judgment. The condemner, the person who condemns is the judge. He says you are unfit to be in the society, you go to committee maximum. He has passed judgment on you. Now, the law of Moses was made to pass judgment. God had to declare men unfit for his righteousness. God had to declare men that you have not qualified to, be, to share in my presence. That's why the law of Moses was given for the purpose of showing sin, for the purpose of passing judgment, so that men can know they have been separated by sin from God. Then the coming of Jesus opens the chapter where we who had been judged, our judgment is put on Jesus so that now you can be declared free from condemnation. And that's why Romans 8 says, for those who are in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no, shout it if you know it, there is therefore now, there is therefore now no, there is therefore now no passing of judgment upon those who are in Christ Jesus why the judgment has been placed on Jesus if you know Jesus has carried your judgment give him praise and a clap offering in Jesus name now if you carry if you carry wrong understanding you never function you can never function with wrong understanding because today I am preaching to you because I know I'm supposed to be preaching to you as your pastor. If somebody comes from anywhere and stands here and begins to preach to you and you have never seen him, he has not been introduced to him, how many know you'll be so worried about what he's trying to do? Are you getting the point? So I'm doing this because I know my position. My brother... Uh, JJ was playing his drum. I cannot play the drums. He knows his position in the prayer. He did not go to back up there. Well, he knows where he was supposed to go. So when he, he left his car, he came straight behind the drums, began to play the drums. Why? He knows his place. Many believers today are all over the place because they do not know what God has declared them to be. Judgment has been taken away. So taking advantage of the grace of God is informed by you understanding what the cross of Jesus meant. And this is important. So I want us to go straight away to the book of Corinthians. The book of Corinthians, chapter 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 1. 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 1. Are you ready? Praise God. Are you ready? Are we ready? Okay. Praise the Lord. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand. I declare to you what, church? I declare to you and to you the gospel which which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand. Believers stand on the efficacy of the gospel of Jesus. You stand on the unfailing promise that is in what Christ accomplished. You don't stand on anything else. So if you don't understand the gospel, 
in which you are served, then you cannot function brilliantly as the Lord wants you to function. But 2021 will be different for you. 2021 is a year of God's light to the church. It's a year of revelation. You will not be grappling in the dark. God will help you to get a revelation of what Christ has done for you so that you can take advantage of the grace of God. Now, when Christ died, he provided the removal of condemnation and the empowerment to function. So the death of Christ removed condemnation, declared you not judged, declared you to be a person who doesn't have a judgment pending upon you because of what Christ has done. And it also empowers you to function like God wants you to function. Are you ready to function in 2021? Talk to me, church. Are you ready to function in 2021? Are you ready to walk like an overcomer in 2021? Are you prepared to experience God's overflow in 2021? Are you prepared to experience wisdom in 2021? Are you ready for God's best to manifest in your life in 2021? Now, the way to go there is this. The gospel in which we stand. We stand on what Christ has done. The gospel is the work of Christ on the cross. And if you understand it, you will take advantage of the grace that that cross provides. Let's go slowly. Okay. Verse. More brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast to the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Unless you did what, church? If you don't mind, just use your mouth in 2021. Unless you did what, church? No, no, talk family from this side. Unless you did what? You believed in. Paul is talking to people, but he realizes it's also possible to believe in vain. To believe in vain means you heard the message, you accepted the message, but you have not taken advantage of the message. To believe in vain is like to take the grace of God in vain. And we are going to look at that. It's like you have heard a message. It is brilliant. It is wonderful. But you have not given it attention. You have heard a message. It is a glorious message. It's a message to save your life and to make your life glorious. But you have ignored the message. You have not given attention to the message. That's why the Bible says, on the gospel on which we stand, it's a daily endeavor. A believer has to choose to endeavor to know the things provided for them in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you know them, you will live victoriously, regardless of what the devil wants to do. So, unless you be, can you shout, I did not believe in vain? No, shouted, I did not. Talk to me again. I did not not believe in vain. My belief belief has results. So for your belief to have results, you must give attention to the message. That's why as a believer, you can't be casual in 2021. No, look at your neighbor. Tell them you can't be casual in 2021. No, talk to them with a smile. Tell them in 2021, you cannot be casual with your spiritual life every other day of the week you are waking up early and excited on Sunday you are oversleeping you can't be casual in 2021 praise the Lord a believer's life is first spiritual then natural praise the Lord the day to wake up earliest is on Sunday but I'm saying the day to be excited most is on Sunday morning the day, the day to dress best is on Sunday morning. The day to look serious is on Sunday morning. The day to look sharp is on Sunday morning. So, for I delivered to you, verse 3, let's continue. For I delivered to you, first of all, what that which also I received, that Christ died for our sins, is defining the gospel, but I will go first there, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again. He is explaining the gospel he shared to them. Paul was not victorious because of many things. Understanding what he is saying here right now. That's what makes believers victorious. This is what makes believers different. 
This is what makes believers prosperous. This is what makes believers invincible, if you remember the message. You become a person who is totally blessed and you are blessed forever. Praise the Lord. So, his secret is this. Is this. He ex he's explaining the gospel. He says, uh, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And that he, he was seen by Cephas, that is Peter, by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me, Paul, also as one born out of due time. You know, Paul was converted way later after Jesus had already been taken. Verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles, whom I am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. I was not worthy, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Something has happened through the grace of God, Paul says, and he ascribes his victory to the grace of God. Let's go down. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Now, Paul brings a very interesting twist to his communication of the gospel. Then he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. But he said, I did more than the rest. Not me, but the grace that was at work in me. Why? The grace of God in me was not in vain. The word vain means this. Are you ready? And that's what I'm saying. Taking advantage of the grace of God. So that the grace of God upon you may not be in vain. May not be of no impact. So in vain means of no impact. Write that down. It means there is no impact. It does not bring any impact. It, did not, it goes to west. The grace of God went to west. Now, Paul says, the grace of God, I did not allow the grace of God in me to go to west. To be of no impact in my life. So, to take the grace of God in vain is to let the grace be to go to west. It is to, uh, it is to not take advantage of. So, the grace of God in the life of Paul was to produce something. Two things I said, it removes the condemnation. You are no longer, in other words, you have been accepted. You know what Paul had done. You get the point? Paul had, had persecuted the church. Paul was not. He calls himself a, a, an apostle who is born out of, out of, outside outside the normal scope. He comes in later and he comes in like an addition to the rest. But he says the grace of God in me made me an apostle. So I did not allow it to be in vain. So Paul begins to use the grace of God to make sure he takes full advantage of the grace of God to do everything God has called him to do. Everybody seated here, God has placed tremendous anointing upon your life. God has pl placed tremendous grace upon you. Shout, I am under the grace of God. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Now, grace is unmerited favor. Grace is God doing for you what you can't do for yourself. Grace is God doing for you without demanding anything from you. It's an offer. Shout, an offer. Is a free offer that God gives you. He tells you, for a prosperous life, I give it to you as an offer. You are my child. I don't want you to think like you need to do anything to access this. So, the grace of God, the enablement of God, the forgiveness of God, the mercies of God upon your life is free. You need to take advantage of it and begin to fly and to do the thing God, things God wants you to do. Praise Jesus. Are we together, church? So, what is our topic? Taking advantage of? You did not finish the sentence. 
What is our topic? Taking? Taking advantage of the grace of God upon my life. In other words, God's favor is upon me. Shout amen. God's mercy is upon me. God's goodness is upon me. For what purpose? Let's go down. Let's go down. Praise the Lord. In In the Bible, we study two things which are very important. We study about the law of Moses and we study about the law of love, which is the law of the spirit that Christ has given us. Now, when you begin to look at the two, you realize the big difference there is between where the Israelites were, the Jews were, and where the church is. There are Jews today who belong to the church, who are born again, they believe in Jesus. They are now not Jews in the flesh. They are, they are, they are, now, they are now part of the church, so they are Jews in the spirit. The real Jews of, of, of Israel. Now you and me have become part of the commonwealth of God through the spirit. So we have become part of the hairs of God through the spirit. And that becomes possible by grace where all your sins have been forgiven you have been embraced by God you feel the warmth of God you feel the mercy of God you feel the favor of God so as a child of God you are supposed to instantly take advantage of what Christ has done if you don't take advantage of what Christ has done now that's the person Paul is saying unless you believed in vain unless the work of Jesus was in vain Jesus died on that cross so that you may be able to live victoriously. Jesus died on that cross. Not for you to just sing he died on the cross. For your life to be impacted. Jesus' death on the cross terminated the penalty for sin. Terminated the penalty that was hanging on our lives and a new chapter opened. As a believer, I can take advantage of that and tell everyone I belong to God. I am a child of God. Praise Jesus. Now, when I was explaining about condemnation, this is the message. The judgment that is passed by the judge, which is condemnation, is condemning you for what you have done and putting you there. When Jesus comes and takes it away, your heart is cleaned. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now from then on, you look at the father, not as a condemner, but as a lover. One who has received and loved you. Praise the Lord. And because he has loved you now, you can take advantage of what he has done and you begin to fly. In other words, he makes you part of his plan. He makes you part of his life. He makes you part of his purpose. He recruits you into his army, into his camp, and he wants to work with you. Let's give Jesus a clap of her and give you understand. So, how do you take advantage of this? How do you benefit yourself from this free gift? Shout free. The grace of God is free. You've been given it for free. God wants to help you. God wants to impress you. God wants to, 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 to grow with you. You see it in, 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 in John. Let's look at John 3. John chapter 3. John 3. How do you go about this? John chapter 3. It's a very interesting story there. Which will help you understand this. Chapter 3. From verse 16. A very common verse. Can we read it together? One, two, three, go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 17, powerfully. For? No, let's wait for each other. Please. This is English service. I believe everybody can read in English. Are we together, church? One, two, three. Are we ready? I want us to read verse 17 together. One, two, three. Let's go. For God did not send his son to the world to condemn it, but that the world may be saved through him. Praise the Lord. So the purpose of the coming of Jesus was for 
not to condemn, not to pass judgment. Why? Judgment had been passed by the law. Shout amen, church. Amen. So Jesus came under the law, received the judgment of the law, and that's why he died on the cross. He did not come to continue to pop, to 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 uh, 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 to propagate condemnation. He did not come to continue to propagate judgment, passing of judgment. No, the law had already done that. So Jesus came to propagate reconciliation. That is saying, so that the world may be saved through him. So from that time on, after Jesus died and rose again, those who have believed in Jesus have been set free from that condemnation and they have received the empowerment of the Lord, acceptance of the Lord. You can speak things and they come to be. You know, when we are in church like this, you look at brothers and sisters and uh, you can sense some feel like, Pastor, it's okay what you're saying, but what do you mean I can make things happen? You know the problem? The problem is a person who has not been renewed in their mind to realize Jesus walked in this earth exactly the way you are. Are you here? Exactly the way you are. If Jesus would come today here in Kisauni, he would wear the same clothes you're wearing. Are you here, church? If Jesus was to visit and be here to function the same way he functioned, he will look like a Giriyama man. He will look like a Luo man, a Kamba man. He will look normal. Praise Jesus. He will sit where you're seated and he will rise up. The difference is this, and this is the gist of the message. The difference is what is happening in the inside. Men are not different because they are big and small. Men are not different because they are tall and short. Men are not different because they come from different tribes. Men become different when in the inside of them there's a different impartation. In the inside, you, inside of you, you begin to know something that others do not know. Like I want to ask you, if the devil stands before you, the, the devil himself stands before you and you are standing here, and he stands before you, what do you feel? There are people who run away. Are you here, church? I'm talking about the inside of you. Because Jesus, at the same stature, born of a woman, Jesus, Jesus was just normal like you and me. But he had something in the inside of him, the reconciliation he had with the Father, the oneness he had with the Father, the impartation he had from the Holy Spirit. You remember the verse I read on Sunday? That itself is what made the difference. The inside of you is what makes the difference in this outer world. Praise Jesus. You cannot walk around feeling like I am judged, I am not good enough and expect the world to answer to you. The change must happen in the inside. Praise Jesus. Shout Jesus if you believe what I'm saying. It should happen inside you. Although you are short, you are powerful. Although you are tall, you are powerful. Although you are a lady, you are powerful. The gifts of God are not in the outside. They come in the inside of a man. It is a spirit man. You look at life and know, I am like Jesus. Shout with me, I am like Jesus. Uh, you are not shouting. Shout, I am like Jesus. No, the way you are answering, you are doubting. Shout, I am like Jesus. I can do like Jesus. I can walk like Jesus. I can speak like Jesus. I have what Jesus has. This side, do you believe you have what Jesus has? Talk to me. Do you believe you have what Jesus has? Yes. When that happens in your spirit, you can put the devil to flight. Yes. Why? What is inside me is detected by the outside world and so I am given pass or I am blocked. Am I talking sense? Yes. Am I talking sense? Yes. Let, let's use uh, Elder Masi. Elder Masi, you, are, you, are, you, are, you have gone through the, the training of soldiers, right? If, if a, man, a, a, a particular man enters this place and is clothed with those things you put here, I don't know what you call them, eh? there are ranks, eh? yeah, rank of a, of a, let's say, a brigadier. If you see that thing, are you able to notice this is a brigadier? You will notice, eh? and what will happen? He is coming here, oh, yeah, he is entering, what will you do? 
Stand up. Yes, stand up. Hey. Straight. Lakini sisi hatutafanya hivyo. See, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But he knows this is a brigadier. So what happens is Mzee Mwasi atasimama. Hata pengine unaweza kuchapa, sio? Hiyo, hiyo. Kama una uniform. Tuseme uko na uniform sasa. Let's say you have your uniform. Then he enters here. Eh? It's me. Let me enjoy this. It's me now. I uh, I enter here. Just sit down. Huko huko wewe unanijua unaniona. So I enter like this. Then I enter when I enter and you need uh, now Unafanya hii ama hivi? Una ninafanya nifanye hivi ama hivi? Eh. Eh. Tuseme niko nayo na wewe uko nayo sasa. Alafu mimi naingia. Then I'm entering. Then And I feel good. I'm feeling good. You know he reacted because he has, he knows what I carry. You get the point? You, are you understanding what I'm trying to say? Yes. Assume now, unijui, na sina uniform, sija, sina chochote cha kuonyesha, nimevaa magwanda ya kawaida. Then I'm entering. When I begin to enter, you just sit down like this. What am I trying to say? Many of us are so empty. Dio sababu salute you pigiwi. Una uniform, dio sababu hakuna atakaye kupisha. Let me come up here. You see, when we are sharing these things, eh, we are sharing them so that you may clothe yourself with Christ in the inside. There is no greater name other than the name of Jesus. Shout Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is the name that every knee bows to. That's why I will never talk much about me. You know, sometimes we talk much about ourselves. Are you here, church? It doesn't help much. I want to talk much about Jesus. I want to think much about Jesus. I want to think much about He who is able to cause every knee to bow. So that in my life as I walk, every time there is a, there is a resistance, I think about the man, Jesus, who lives in me. So what will happen is what Elder Mas is doing. I will be saluted. You, 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 you will pass where others are not passing. Mwambia jine niyako va uniform. Huko mwambia vizuri. Tell them va uniform. You are so... You see, you are so naked. Or you are so clothed in your own clothes. Sina pesa, your own clothes. Nimezaliwa ugiriamani. Kule ndani ndani bundu, your own clothes. You are too conscious of yourself. What about you are taking the grace of God in vain? You are allowing the grace of God to go to waste. Don't tell us about how good your father was. Tell us how good Christ has been in your life. That is the only thing that will cause you to function like Paul. Paul says, I did not let the grace of God to be in vain in my life. I took advantage of the grace. I have seen some soldiers, sometimes, wakati kuna kafiyo, wakati wako leave, they go back, they put on their army, army gowns, whatever, army clothes, and then they go out after 10. You take advantage of your clothes. Praise the Lord. We have been told if curfew continues, pastors will be given essential services ID cards. I'll make sure I take advantage of it. I'm not foolish. I will take advantage of it. And I will, I will take that card and I will decide to go out at night. Bure. Hakuna mali naenda, nataka tu ni toe. Naenda wapi, ni naenda essential services. You know you are a child of God. Praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor, when are, have you been taking advantage of the grace of God in your life? Are you conscious of that grace? Are you conscious you are a child? Shout, I'm a child of God. Are you conscious you are a child of God? It is impossible for a child of God not to be respected. Angalia msemi amina, you did not get what I... It is impossible for you not to be respected. Why? Don't wait for respect from people. The spiritual realm knows you. Amen. Amen. 
But it knows you if you know yourself. Because to know yourself is to put on the equivalent clothing. The Bible talks about the armor. We talked about the armor last year. The armor of God. Put on the armor of God. I am the righteousness of God. When you're talking to the devil, let him see the uniform of Christ in your life. Let him see your declaration that the blood of Jesus is at, is at work in my life. It doesn't matter how long the enemy tries to resist. He will give in. Because Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He is all powerful. Let give him, let's give him praise in Jesus' name. I want you to make this declaration after me. Say in 2021. You're not shouting. Shout in 2021. I'm taking advantage of the grace of God in my life. Shout again in 2021. I am benefiting from the grace of God which is in my life. Shout at the top of your voice. I am anointed by the name of Jesus. I will not shy away. Some of you, some of you, Ah, Pastor, but what I'm telling you is some of you are shying away from business that are meant to live to your life forever. You are not saying amen now. Some of you are shying away. The Holy Ghost has been prompting you, prompting you, prompting you, prompting you. But you look at yourself. You are wearing your own clothes. You need to wear the armor of Christ. That's why you are fearing because your mind is saturated with your with your life. You're saturated with where you come from. You're, you look at your father and your great-grandfather, great-grandfather, then you say, who am I? You are no different from Gideon. Gideon is called by God, a mighty man of valor. And by the way, every child, no man who ever lived has had an advantage like we have in Christ Jesus. Even Elijah was looking to our days. Are you here, church? Elijah was looking for, was, was wishing he lived during our time. Because Elijah was just being visited by the spirit, then he goes. But the spirit of God lives you, in you, Mzemwanza. The spirit of the Lord is in you. He dwells in you. In him we walk, in him we move, in him we have our being. I challenge you in Jesus' name, 2021, take advantage of the grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You are loaded with God's grace. For the Son of God did not come to condemn the world, but he came that we may be saved through him. The chapter of grace, salvation, and the mercies of God upon our lives opened up 2,000 years ago. And I'm taking advantage of it myself. There is no way I will minus in 2021. There can only be addition. It is not glory to grass. It's from glory to glory. It is from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. It's not from glory to grass. Are you ready, church? Let's give Jesus a clap of fire. <laughs> verse 18. Read verse 18. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 18. Read it aloud, church. He who believes in him is not... Shout amen. amen. He who believes in Jesus has no pending judgment over their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have believed, have believed in Jesus, church, have you believed in Jesus? Let me see your hand. You have believed in Jesus? Have you believed in Jesus, church? I have if you have believed in Jesus, you are not condemned. Amen. amen. Two. He says what? But he who does not believe he is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So, condemnation comes by not believing. If you believe, you are not condemned. Condemnation is passing judgment over somebody. Like, you are not fit. You are not worthy. You are not, that's what the law said. You, if you don't do anything, then you will die. So the law was pointing at your mistakes, pointing at your failures. But the grace of God declares, if you have believed in Jesus, that has been cut away. You see, listen to this. This is very powerful. Listen to this. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he cut the legality of sin from the bottom. That's what the Bible says. Sin no longer has power over us. 
the grace of God did not terminate your, possib your possibility to sin. Listen to that. The grace of God, what God did, did not terminate your possibility to sin because you are not sinning is by your effort of taking advantage of what Christ has done. Are you getting the point? So Jesus cut the legality of sin. So sin does not have, have legal grip over any believer. Are you here now? Jesus has removed it. In other words, you cannot be accused. God, from God's standpoint, you cannot be accused to be guilty. Why? That accusation came on Jesus. But if you don't take advantage of it, you wallow in sin and in defeat. Let me explain this. Um, JJ, come. Just stand where you are. Look at this now. If I declare... I'm God now. I declare, if you believe in Jesus, say I believe in Jesus. If JJ believes in Jesus and accepts him as Lord and Savior, immediately the power that raised Christ from the dead cuts the legality and the penalty of sin over his life. So he is not guilty anymore. Are we together? But it is him now who must know that, praise the Lord, because if he continues to live the same way, what happens is he has his life tethered by his imagination thinking. His brain is not renewed. So although the legality is not there, the deception remains. Are we together, church? So this, Jesus doesn't do this. You are free, so I carry you and I bring you here. Because then it will mean we are robots. Am I alone? Go back. <laughs> Am I alone? It will mean you are a robot. Ina manisha, yesu wakikuokoa, anakunyakua, na nakuleta mahali alipo, na mahali alipo, we ufikiri, sasa ya mwenye anakuingiza. No, that's why you must believe. Believing is for you. Taking advantage of the grace is for you. That's why we have different stages in people's level in Christ. Because some are not taking advantage. Somebody who's not reading the word to see what God says about them and then they take advantage cannot be the same level with somebody who is reading the word and taking advantage. And that's why I'm keen on reading the word and taking advantage. Yesterday night I was reading the Bible and I saw a scripture in the Bible and it made something new. I don't want to mention it right now. Totally in my life and felt so excited. Very excited. So I have grown to another level. So you will think, we are the same level, but you realize I've grown because I looked at the truth of the word of God. Are we together, church? That's why I told you, 2021, you can't be lazy. 2021, you can't be lazy. So, now, if I declare you are free, and I, I declare the gospel, I've set you free, I've cut the sin now, it is his duty now as a believer. Praise the Lord. Now you are a believer. You lift up your hands, and you're praising God, you're reading the word of God, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. So you will continue to discover Christ set me free. I am not a victim. Can you imagine somebody who has been declared free from Shimolatewa and is not told? They will continue in prison. True? True? So what happens? It is not enough for me to sign that he is free. It is important for him to also know he is free. Because when he knows he's free, he talks differently. Let me imagine you're in Shimolatewa. I'm talking to me a lot of Greenaway. Because Shimolatewa na upate, ulikuwa mefungwa, uwezi fungwa, lakini tunasema tu. Sawa, sawa. Kwa mefungwa kama miaka kumi. I love declaration imetoka, na barua imetoka juzi. Anafu kunyo naambia soma hapa. Unapata kwamba, uliachiliwa na ile amnesty ya president, uende nyumbani kesho. Unaongeaji na wenzako, wafungwa wenzako hapo. Unaongea vipi na, unaongea vipi na wafungwa hapo. That's what he said. You getting the attitude? Let me push this again. It is not enough for Jesus to die. It's only meaningful if you are taking advantage of his death. And that comes through information. JJ is saying, kutoka siku ya nawambia, hata chakulo na zakata, lunch. Unaenda pale kwa wale wasimamia unawambia ebu nipe simu niongee nyumbani. Utaongea jiwe ni mfunga. Ah, mini liachiliwa. Hata tikiti ndiyo sina. 
You are, you, are you here? You're getting what I'm saying? So his attitude changes. Shout amen, church. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? The impact of what I did when I signed his freedom as the judge must come to him. The message must reach him. When it reaches him, his attitude naturally changes. That's why people who know the gracious message of Jesus are different. They talk differently. But those who do not know, ako hapa. Yesu alimweka huru. Lakini akiwa hapa, lugha yake ni hile, jamani, sijui tutatoka siku gani. Huu jamani, siunaona ni fala kweli? Mbona msemi hamia, sinu kwe lakini? At wewe, uliwekwa huru na ujui. Sasa unapata, he's ignorant. When you stay in ignorance, you suffer. Look at your neighbors, muambie utapata shida. Ukiwa unaka, ukizuba utapata shida. Muambie vizuru ukizuba utapata shida. Na utaanza kusema, mbona wenzangu wanaendelea. Hakuna mtu wanaendelea, watu wametambua. Kuendelea ni kutambua. Sema amina. Paul says, when the grace of God hit me, I took advantage of it. I took, I walked away. I did so much. Sit. Give, give JJ a clap. So, 2021, brothers and sisters, stretch your legs. I'm finishing now. Praise Jesus. Stretch forth your legs and begin to think like a child of God. Talk like a child of God. When, when you apply someone and they give you a regret, just look at it and smile. Tell them, there must be something better than this. Think like a child of God. Be loaded with the truth of God's word. Do not let the grace of God be in vain in your life. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me finish by reading you this. In 2 Corinthians... 2 Corinthians 6 1. 2 Corinthians 6 1, my last verse. Praise Jesus. We then, verse 1, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Let's read it together. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Praise the Lord. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. Don't let what Christ has done not work for you. Because God is willing. Praise the Lord. Don't allow it to just pass you by. Don't allow the offer to just go without being utilized. If you receive a coupon, go to the supermarket and use it. If you receive the offer God is giving you for prosperity, please cash it on in Jesus' name. Lay a demand on what Christ has done. Hallelujah. A man can shout, Christ died for me. Do you believe he was, he, he was beaten for your, for your transgressions? And by stripes you were healed? 2021, walk in health in Jesus' name. And it not, it's, not, it's not necessarily going to be easy. But when that challenge hits you, react accordingly. Say, Jesus carried for me. I am not carrying it. It is illegal to pay for the same sin twice. Praise the Lord. It is illegal and it is unacceptable for you to go through what Christ went through. He became poor so that you may be rich. He, became, he, was, he was wounded for your transgressions. He was beaten so that you may be healed. Praise the Lord. And if you believe that, that's what we are supposed to do in church. And let me challenge you in the name of Jesus. As you plan your year 2021. This is an instruction because I'm through. As you plan your year 2021. Just like I'm planning my year 2021. We are planning the year as a church in 2021. Remember, go every, every resource from heaven is towards you. God's supply is towards you. Change your mindset. Shout, God loves me. God loves you. God's resources are directed towards you. Please don't look at a hardship. I was talking to a sister the other day. When you face a hardship, don't give up. Change it. You didn't hear that. When there is a blockage on your way, don't go back. Open the blockage. Oh, I want to do this and my money is little. Look for more money. Don't say I can't do it. Am I talking to anyone? Am I talking to anybody? If you've been believing God for something you feel like is delaying, say, I am stronger than the situation. Praise the Lord. 
If you feel scared, please, I challenge you in Jesus, don't back off. Keep on doing. Keep on believing. Keep on running. Because Jesus' supply is towards you. He loves you. Let's lift up our hands where we are. Just lift up your hands in Jesus' name. Just lift those holy hands to Jesus. Maybe you are there and you are wondering, what am I supposed to do in 2021? There is an answer from the Spirit of God right now. If you've been wondering, what am I supposed to do? And you've been looking at people and thinking, it's people who are not helping me. Your help comes from the Lord. Just don't put your hands down. Just put them up. Your help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and earth. 2021 is an important time that you can reflect and begin to expect the best from the Lord. And you're choosing now, I am taking advantage of the grace. If you believe the grace of God is upon you, just lift those holy hands and begin to thank God. Wherever you are seated, just begin to thank you for your grace in my life. Follow. Just thank you, Lord, for your grace in my life. Thank you for your anointing in my life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We are praying right now. Just open your mouth. We are taking some minutes of prayer. Lord, I am praying that you may quicken me. Help my unbelief. Every situation of my life that has been bogging me and holding me down in 20 2020. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I yield to you, precious Holy Spirit, because you're able. Talk to Jesus. He's able. He knows your heart. He knows what I cannot know. He can touch where I cannot touch. Jesus, talk to him right now. Just make your confessions to him. I believe you. I am taking advantage of what you have done. Everything you laid down for me, I receive it in the name of Jesus. I am a confident believer. I am a confident believer. I am a child of God. I am not weak. I am strong. The grace of God is upon me. I can overcome everything. I am not held down by fear. Jesus lives in me. Jesus resides in me. Make the prayer to the Lord. Just trust him in the name of Jesus. Trust him. Speak to that situation. Speak to that situation somebody. Speak to that situation in the name of Jesus. The grace is upon you. The anointing of the Lord is upon your lips. Just speak to that situation. Just speak to it in Jesus' name. Don't fear. Command it to turn around in the name of Jesus. That impossible situation. That hard situation in your life. Command it to turn around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That disease is defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. That fear is overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace of God is sufficient. The grace of God is sufficient. The grace of God is sufficient for you. I want to pray with you, wherever you are right now. And I want to speak the words of the Lord upon you. The authority of the name of Jesus in my lips and in your lips is going to cause the situation to turn around. There are some who have been struggling in, this, in our midst. People have been struggling and they feel confused. They don't know, how am I going to come out of this situation? I dare you in Jesus' name. Declare boldly, I am coming out. Just declare, I am coming out of this situation. This situation is not permanent. Just keep praying. We are praying. If you're there, you know what we are talking about. I'm coming out of this situation. Everything is changing for me. Uh, give him a clap offering. You believe everything is changing for you. Just give him a, just celebrate him. You, everything is changing for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now receive the prayer in the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I rebuke every spirit of fear. I rebuke every spirit of the enemy. I rebuke deception in Jesus name. I stand against every authority tormenting spirits of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus of every believer today. And Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus that there is freedom and the favor of the Lord is upon your people. There are new ideas flowing over their lives in the name of Jesus. Their ideas today, their ideas tomorrow, their fresh ideas this coming week. The Lord is guiding and leading your people. Father, I commit these children to your hands. I pray for them in the name of Jesus. They will be strong where you have called them to be. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that their dreams will become a reality. I pray for them in Jesus' mighty name that the sweeping glory of Christ is going to impart into them what they need to do in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father. 
Thank you because you're guiding us. Thank you because you're working with us. Thank you because we have solutions. Thank you because there is breakthrough in 2021. Thank you because families will be restored in 2021. Thank you because people will prosper financially in Jesus' name. Thank you because there shall be spiritual prosperity over the people of God in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. If you believe this has happened to you, lift up your hands and give him praise. <laughs> lift up your hands and give him praise. <laughs> lift up your hands and give him, give him some important praise. <laughs> At the back, if you believe this is yours, just join the people in appreciating Jesus. Just join the people in appreciating Jesus for the new life. For the wonderful things that are coming upon your way. God loves you. God loves you immensely. And God is going to be with you. He has been with you. He is in you. He's going to guide you. May the Lord God bless you. You have a blessed week. The peace of the Lord be with you. And grow in the Lord. Look into the law of grace. And let the Lord teach you what you need to do. In Jesus name. Amen.